Good morning, folks. Some of the more memorable news stories hit the wire today. We're going to hit them back, cover weather and more, starting with our star at spaceweathernews.com. And we find the last day on the sun with coronal holes on the south. The sunspot groups decaying as their brightness tries pitifully to break through the corona. The solar wind stream calmed considerably over the last two days. Next one is about two to three days away. Geomagnetic conditions should remain calm in the interim. We're going to do some forecasts here, starting with the typhoons in the West Pacific. Taiwan about to get absolutely leveled with this storm. Then after that, luckily all the systems either skirt coastlines or head out to sea. It will be eyes on Taiwan Thursday and Friday. Just to the west, we find India with a powerful low overhead. Now while this will bring needed monsoon conditions across the region, also likely to over inundate numerous areas in the subcontinent. The low in eastern Canada will draw moisture into the central states today and drive isolated powerful storms this evening. Meanwhile, the small lows and convergence in Europe will similarly nail the central nations in that block tonight. Folks, we're doing our top science story first and heading deep into the heart of the Milky Way galaxy. The focus is Sagittarius A, the galactic center, and it appears to be undergoing an outbursting uptick. The near-infrared band of the galactic core is off the charts this year, dwarfing all previous peak readings and sending astronomers looking for explanations from dusty encounters to the SO2 close approach last year. Problem is they've seen both of those before, but not this surge in electromagnetic energy at that wavelength. The concern, of course, is that it's merely gearing up for a much more energetic outburst, and this is where scouring all the journals will be key because they're not going to come right out and say galactic superwave, we're going to have to translate the astro speak. Let's go next to the opposite sides of planet life. The descriptions of Titan and Enceladus as emerging worlds could not be more apt. They truly are versions of past Earth, primordial and snowball states respectively, and they definitively are eyeing them for life characteristics. Who knows what either could look like in 10,000 years. And now the other side of the planet timeline, dead planets. These are planets whose star has exploded or burned out, and they either orbit a dead core or are flying through space as a rogue. They say that their radio signals can last for a billion years after the death of the planet and its system, which they think will allow their first discovery of a major planet using radio techniques. And if that is the goal, might want to mention their best bet is they'll catch a signal off a massive ring system, something not unlike Saturn's, just slightly less inviting. Quick astronomy shot, there are characteristic patterns in the UV return at high celestial latitudes and not only can they not tell if it's caused by galactic or extragalactic sources, but they do know that whatever it is, is not a known source. Talk about opening a door. Last but not least, three cheers for this group of scientists. When we step down from the whole universe scale cosmology, we go cosmic web, galaxy clusters, galactic physics, and then astrophysics at the more localized level. And these scientists want to focus on electricity and plasma. It's like reading part of Alfin's Cosmic Plasma book, but with an eye to slip past the mainstream gatekeepers unnoticed. Formation, activity, death, all involve the heavily complex and little understood activity of astrophysical plasmas. And speaking of plasma, I am curious if anyone got responses to their emails to professors about the cosmology movie. I have already seen one frustrated and eyes closed, and I'd like to know if such disposition is shared. Video link below if you missed it. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got wind maps and shots of our star to close, and we'll do this all again tomorrow. Right here, but right now, it's 4.20 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open, no fear. Be safe, everyone.